All right, this video is going to be question number nine from paper one. This is, again, the uh, long answer section. So this question will have quite a few parts to it, as you can see here, A, B, C, D, and E. But we'll run through them all, and they all do tie together. So we have this quadratic, f of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 8 plus k. And in the first part, we have to find the discriminant d of this quadratic in terms of k. So I've got our function written down here. So again, we're going to find the discriminant. So just to recall, remember the quadratic formula that says our solutions are of the form x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And the b squared minus 4ac that is going to be our discriminant. And again, this would be for a generic uh, a quadratic if we had, say, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So in this case, uh, let's fill in some numbers here. So there's no, whoops, there's no... Uh, coefficient visible in front of the x squared, right? But that's just a 1. So that's going to be our a value. The positive 6 is going to be our b value. And then the 8 plus k is going to be our c value. So the discriminant, again, that's going to be b squared. So we said b is positive 6 minus 4 times a, which is 1, multiplied by c, which is 8 plus k. So 6 squared is 36. Well, 4 times 1 is 4, and we will distribute that to the 8 plus k. So we'll get minus 32 minus 4k. So 36 minus 32, hey, that's 4 minus 4k. And that's going to be the discriminant in terms of k. Okay, so for part b, it says, given that f of x is greater than 0 for all values of x, state with reasons the set of values that can be taken by the discriminant, and also by k. So two related questions. So to re just to uh, maybe make this a little visual here too, if our quadratic, and notice our, our coefficient on our quadratic again is a positive one, so we know that our, our parabola is going to open upwards. If we had, say, two solutions, if we had two solutions, that means our discriminant is going to be um, a positive number. And that makes sense because if our discriminant is a positive number, right, we're going to have negative b plus or minus the square root of whatever that number is. And then we're going to have to do this plus and minus. We're going to get two solutions. So, okay, so that could happen. If our parabola, say, is just touching the x-axis, that's going to be if the discriminant equals 0 because, again, this whole term is going to be zero, so our only solution to this uh, equation, the only root, and again, a solution is where the quadratic crosses. Uh, it, it's going to correspond to where the graph would cross the x-axis. So if the discriminant is zero, we're only going to get that negative b over 2a, which is only going to give us one solution, which corresponds to one point of intersection. Well, in this case, we know that our function is strictly above the x-axis because it says, well, f of x is greater than 0. So in that case, our discriminant is going to be less than 0. So if our discriminant is less than 0, well, now we're taking the square root of a negative number, and we're only dealing with real solutions. So that would correspond to our graph not having, uh, uh, our, our quadratic equation having no solutions, which means it doesn't cross the x-axis. And that's what's happening in this case, right? It says the function is all the y values are greater than 0, so it's not crossing the x-axis. So again, our discriminant um, would have to be greater than 0. So, okay, so, so I just gave a reason. I didn't write all that down, but that's what you would write down. You would write something to that effect. You would say, hey, graph doesn't cross the x-axis, so there's no real solutions. So the discriminant would have to be less than zero. You know, maybe I, I would write something more, a little more elegant than that, but that's what we just said. So you would say something in, in, in 
to that effect. Okay, so okay, so that means our we just found that our discriminant equaled four minus four k, and we said, well, that has to be less than zero. So now we just have to solve this inequality. So let's see, I've got some extra stuff down here. Let me get rid of this. I was working on some stuff earlier. I was actually working on this one earlier. Sorry about that. Two seconds. All right. Okay, so now we have to solve this inequality. Well, we'll just add 4k to both sides. So if we add 4k to both sides, we'll just have that 4 is less than 4k. And if we divide both sides by 4, well, that says that k is going to be greater than 1. So that's going to be our restriction on k. So the discriminant has to be less than 0, and correspondingly, we're going to get the k is greater than 1. Okay, so our next part we have to do is we have to write our quadratic in vertex form. So let me copy that down here and clean this up a little bit because we don't need all of this. All right, so we're going to write this in the form x plus p squared plus k. So that's the form that we want. So again, this is going to be vertex form. And when we have it in this uh, form, our vertex is going to be at the point negative p comma q. So even though, again, remember, even though we're seeing plus p inside the parentheses, the x-coordinate of our vertex is at negative p, but we do use the positive q. So let me erase one more little straggler there. Okay, so to do this, remember, we're going to complete the square. And again, I have videos on all this stuff, vertex form, completing the square. But again, I'm assuming if you're taking the IB exam that you've seen this at least at some point. So again, this is intended to be a refresher. So to complete the square, what we do, well, in this case, there's no coefficient. Well, there's a coefficient of one in front of x squared, so that's no problem. We take half of the coefficient in front of our the term involving x. So that's going to give us 3. So we take 1 half of that number. And then we take that number and we square it. So I'm going to have x plus 6x. So that's going to be my new number that's going to, I'm going to throw inside of here. And then we still have our plus 8 plus k. But to keep this, this, uh, this, this function equivalent to what it was before, I'm adding 9 out of nowhere. Well, I've got to subtract 9 to keep everything even. So now the idea is we write this, the first three terms, as a perfect square. So maybe even let me keep those in parentheses. Why not? Okay, so we're going to have f of x equals... So we'll have x, and whatever, when you take the half of the coefficient, whatever that number is, we've got positive 3. You're going to have x plus that number squared. So this this expression, x squared plus 6x plus 9, that's going to factor as x plus 3 quantity squared. And then we can simplify this last part. So we have positive 8 minus 9. That would be negative 1 plus k. And I'm just going to write that as plus k minus 1. Okay, so this is now in the form that we wanted. This is going to be our x plus p. And this is going to be our q term. Okay, so that is now in, let's see, uh, vertex form. So explain how the form obtained in C confirms the answer to B. Okay, so this makes sense. So we said since k is, has to be greater than 1, right? That's what we said here. k is greater than 1. Since k is greater than 1, the y-coordinate... of the vertex, right? I mean, if this exactly equaled 1, we would get 0. But since this is greater than 1, the y-coordinate of the vertex 
must be larger than zero since k greater than one means that k minus one has to be greater than zero. And therefore, since the parabola opens upwards, there are no solutions. And so our function f of x is strictly greater than zero. And again, you could even mention it opens upwards because the coefficient in front of x squared is a positive number. You could even mention that to be, to be really thorough. Okay, last but not least, okay, if k equals four, write down the minimum point of the quadratic. Okay, no problem. So, again, this is old stuff and I think I solved it already. But let me, re let me redo it one more time. So if k equals 4, then our function f of x, we're going to have x plus 3 quantity squared plus, well, 4 minus 1. And that's going to give us x plus 3 quantity squared plus 3. So that's going to mean our vertex, again, we have to take the, the opposite sign here. So the x-coordinate of the vertex will be negative 3, and the y-coordinate will be sitting at positive 3. So, all right, that would be our solution. So again, on the exam, write some more stuff down than what I wrote. I mean, I definitely said it all verbally. I don't want to make you guys and gals sit here and watch me write it all down. But on the exam, that's what you would do. Just be a little more thorough. Never hurts to give extra information versus less information. When you're positive, you know what you're doing correctly. If you're not sure, maybe give a little less information and hopefully you'll get credit anyways. But um, yeah, so that's how all that stuff ties together and it all relates. So quite a few things there, completing the square, vertex form, just recognizing again how this discriminant is going to uh, give you two solutions, one solution or no solutions and how that corresponds to what the graph would look like. I think that's a good way to think about it, at least for me. But yeah, okay, I hope this helps, and I hope it makes some sense.